Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. Today on The Slide Lens, I'm going to talk about my favorite black and white film to shoot, and that is Tri-X. Tri-X is a 400 ISO film. You know, back in the day when you're shooting film, you shot mostly 100 ISO film because you really wanted fine grain. You wanted clean images and fine grain. But in a low light situation, you'd go to Tri-X because it was two stops, give you two stops more light than a 100 uh, ISO film. So we're shooting here in the Grand Canyon. This is the Grand Canyon behind me. We're on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, which I think is a gorgeous place to be. We're also gonna be over in Vermilion uh, Cliffs. We'd hope to see some condors, but so far no condors. But we've seen some beautiful areas. The rain keeps coming through and it leaves great weather behind, you know, so we're kind of shooting in between rainstorms. Just a great time to work here. So we're gonna look at images from Vermilion Cliffs. We're gonna look out at uh, Lee's Ferry. We'll be here in the uh, north rim of the Grand Canyon as we just shoot. Even though I'm exposing tracks at 1600, I'm actually shooting it at 800. I want a nice dense negative. And so that's gonna give me that beautiful contrast. It's gonna give me nice highlights and it's gonna open up the shadows. In film, you expose for the shadows, print for the highlights. Unlike digital photography, which is almost the opposite, you expose for the highlights, you print for the shadows. Well, in film photography, you definitely expose for the shadows and then you're going to print for those highlights. So when I shoot an eight at 800 rather than 1600, but I'm going to push it two, uh, two stops in processing, it's gonna give me a really good dense negative, which is gonna open up those shadows, gonna give me exposure in the shadow areas. But with Tri-X, I get really beautiful deep blacks in those shadows, and those deep blacks look fabulous. I get great contrast because I'm building the contrast as I process it. So even though I'm in a very kind of soft, low light situation, it gives me a beautiful, uh, just beautiful contrast, beautiful grain, and just feels soft and wonderful. Do I shoot it in direct sunlight? Not very often. It's just not a good look for Tri-X. It's already, especially if you're pushing it at 1600, it's too much exposure. So I wanna bring it into a situation where it's like end of the day. Here's one I did at Death Valley. At the sand, at the end of the day, you just see that grain and you just see the contrast build. There was hardly any light going on here at all. But I can do that long exposure and it just gives me beautiful highlight, beautiful shadow, and that really wonderful grain. So I'm using Tri-X film in this situation. And the reason I am is because if you look out here, it is very flat. There's the highlights to the shadows. I mean, the clouds are very bright, but all the mountains inside the valley are extremely flat. It's not a great time to shoot. But if I take Tri-X, it's a 400 speed film. It's a print film. If I shoot it at uh, 1600, that's two stops and push it two stops. It's gonna build contrast. It's gonna give me contrast that wasn't there before. And I just love the look of the grain because the grain builds as that grain builds, it just gives it a really artistic look. It's gonna be a piece I can make that'll just look great hanging on the wall, but it's a great time to shoot tracks because it is just so flat in here. All right, so we're here at Horseshoe Bend. Uh, we got here super early, and then about 300 of our closest friends showed up. Uh, it's pretty amazing how popular this place is, but it's absolutely gorgeous. But while we were here shooting, waiting for the sun, I noticed a couple. So I grabbed the Hasselblad and I photographed this couple just in that lower light. There's a little bit of highlight and that 1600 is going to look really nice in that situation because the little bit of highlight is going to build as you uh, push the processing. And I think shooting people with that 1600 in that kind of low light situation, this situation would not work. It's just way too contrasty. It doesn't work near as nicely. But in that kind of softer, kind of really low contrast uh, situation, photographing people looks fabulous. So this is what I'm carrying in my SKB case. I've got my microfiber towel. I've got my Hasselblad with an 80 millimeter lens. One film back, I'm only carrying one film back because I'm just doing black and white. I've got my 40 millimeter lens, Hasselblad lens. I've got my 28 to 75. Uh, that's the G2 from Tamron 2.8. I've got my Horizon camera, that uh, two frame 35 millimeter pano camera. I've got batteries for the Sony, carrying my light meter, and then my camera is sitting off over the side there, but I've got, I carry my, the uh, A7R 3 and on that I've got the 17 to 28, and then of course my filter kit from Nisi. I'm gonna have my grad filters and polarizer for shooting uh, landscape. All right, let me talk a little bit about metering. I use a very simple approach to metering. I don't put this in. I want this an instant meter reading. I want the bowl to be out. And I just simply aim this back at me. I'm usually looking the same direction that the camera's looking. So as I'm looking at the same direction the camera's looking, I aim this back towards me and I take a meter reading. 
I don't aim it towards the sun or towards the shadow or I just aim it straight back towards the light that is falling onto the scene. So if I'm looking this way, sun is side lighting me, I'm going to put this up, I'm going to take a reading this direction. Now this is 2000 f8. This is 4000 f8. There's a one stop difference in those two. This is calculating more of the shadow. This is calculating the direct sun. But if you look at this scene, I'm looking at direct sun that way. Everything is brightly lit that way. If I look this way, half of it is in shadow because the sun is coming in from the left. And so it changes the dynamic of the scene. I have used this method my entire life. It works perfectly. And after all, you're shooting print film that has a lot of latitude, but just know that you aim this the same direction that your lens is looking and it takes a metering of the light that is falling onto the scene. So here's some uh, shots I did at the beach, a little, a little more direct sun. You can kind of see the difference in that direct sun, the contrast that you get uh, compared to if in just a really soft, low contrast situation. I think a soft, low contrast situation, not no contrast. I still moved them so that the sun is a little bit to the side, gives a little bit of highlight and a little bit of shadow. And that contrast that's there will build when you uh, push it two stops. And then it gives you the grain and just that beautiful black and white look. So shot with the hot spot, that was a lot of fun. So to wrap this up, it's a very simple equation for me. I shoot Tri-X 400 because I like the contrast, because I'm shooting it in low light situations. I love the blacks, give you a nice deep black. I love the fact that it gives you plenty of exposure because I want to shoot it late into the uh, evening sun. I love the fact that even when it gets low light, you can still get an exposure without having to be too long. It just gives me a beautiful artistic look with that grain and the contrast shooting in that low light situation. So we're back in the studio and I want to do a little kind of uh, wrap up of the wrap up. I'm able to look at the images now that we shot of the Tri-X. This is the Tri-X that we exposed at 800 and we pushed it two stops. So this just gives you a really good idea of what the images look like. So this is the first one. We're in Horseshoe Bay or Horseshoe Bend. Horseshoe Bend in the evening we came and we this is what we saw. We saw this just it's lit from behind. It is flat. It is really, really not very interesting. Um, I mean, there's stuff there, but it's really important that if you're going to shoot tracks, it doesn't mean you don't want any contrast because this is a way too flat situation. We came back the next morning and now the sun is coming off from my left and up. And so it's creating shadows. You see the shadow in the crack of this mountain here. We're seeing shadows on the rock. They're not really heavy shadows. We're shooting very early in the morning, so those shadows are very subtle, but they're there. I mean, look at the difference you get between no shadows and just a little bit of shadow from the side. And that uh, Tri-X 400 just builds the contrast and gives you a beautiful image. So you really want to shoot in very low light situations, but not without shadows. It's really important to understand that you need to have shadows. So I hope you enjoyed the images we shot in the Grand Canyon and also in Page, Arizona. We shot a bunch of them on Route 66 on our way back home. Just fun to shoot that Tri-X push two stops. So I hope you enjoyed this. Look for our next lesson. I'm going to talk in depth about metering and show examples of how metering changes the look of the images and how to get control of the images through the metering process. So look for that lesson that's coming up, how to meter, black and white film. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. I'm Yasi. I'm a touring music photographer. I was born and raised in Tehran, Iran, and nowadays I'm based in LA. So when, when I was about 15 was the first time I learned that touring is a thing. I started to befriend some people in, in bands and they would tell me about how they just get into a van every day and they drive to a different city and they put on a show every night and I was like, that's that's it. That's what I want to do. I want to I want to document that. And so that that was just it. From then on, photo only. I'm working my dream job right now, and that's made possible entirely by cameras. So it's very very important to me to protect my cameras everywhere I go. And I choose to protect my cameras with SKB cases. Mm -hmm.